Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending on where you are in the world. I'm coming to you from Utah, USA. And this is Gloria White. Dot. Straight up the middle. Tonight I'm going to be reading the epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Ephesians. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen in us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Christ Jesus to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in, his, in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and tre- prejudice, having made known unto us the mystery, the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye have trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of his of your salvation, in whom also after all ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. I'm trying to keep this focused so you guys can read along with me. I got some um, feedback the last time I read from the Bible that that the gentleman couldn't see the scripture, but I wasn't focusing on that, but I am now, because I want you you to be able to read along with me. So, forgive me as I adjust the camera. Which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory? Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, in the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. 
and have put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fulfilleth all in all. Trying to focus. I want you to be able to see the words of God as I read them. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now the prince of the air would be Satan. And I guess at a time in my life, I was just right where he described. And the lust of my flesh and the desires of my flesh and of my mind and consumed with the things of this earth. But now, now, God has called me. He has put me under his wing, and he has forgiven my sin. And I have the promise of eternal life because his son died on the cross for me. Because God so loved the world, he did this thing. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. Now quicken means alive, give life. By, by grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Trying to focus. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, God's promise, Jesus' promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus ye have Ye who sometimes were far off are made high by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made but one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. That means that Christ came and he, when he called Paul into service as an apostle. After Christ had died, he he gave salvation to the Gentiles. And because of that, there is no more separation between the believers, whether they be of the original blood of Israel or whether they be of the Gentile blood. Because under Christ, we are all one. We are all one people. We are all one, one of his children. And so there is no separation. So what Paul said there is, 
for he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity there, thereby, and came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building, fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye are also build it together for an, in, for an inhabitation of God through the Spirit. Meaning we'll all live together as one, one being under Christ Jesus unto God our Father. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, and in, he means into the service uh, unto Christ. That's how he frames being a prisoner of Christ Jesus. When, when, when Christ met Paul on the road to Damascus, he blinded him. He put scales upon his eyes and told him to go to Damascus and to wait for a man named Artemis and that he would fulfill, tell him all things. And then Christ Jesus took Paul for two and a half years and taught him. He taught him all things. So he was a prisoner of Christ Jesus. And now, now he's an, his apostle. And his, his, his job that Christ gave to him was to preach to the Gentiles. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by thee, effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all saints in this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches, riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery to have discernment to, un to have understanding which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not, 
at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, by the Holy Spirit. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. that ye might be filled with all the whole fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Our faith, is what he's saying, is able through our faith to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowness, lowliness, and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. That means don't be proud and boastful. And when you're when you're suffering and suffering for a long time, you know, lift one another up. Be there for each other as Christ is there for us. And we never walk alone without him. So with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, enduring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. I'm sorry, I think I got out of focus there, folks. There, is that better? Therefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Now, he, when he says he descended to the lower parts of the earth, he descended there to preach this gospel of salvation to those that had died before he was crucified. Because God loves us all. And his salvation is for everyone, even those who, who had died. So now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave 
some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. For teachers, these are teachers. These are people that are teaching God's words. These are the ones that are telling us the gospel. These people, these apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and pastors and teachers for the per perfecting of the saints. That's us for the work of the ministry. Our ministry is to sow the seeds and to bring the love of God and the salvation to others so that they too can be saved. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive the workers of iniquity, the sinners who are lonely and want you to be with them. Beware of them. Read your Bible and know what God says is right and true and good so that you too can be right and true and good. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him all things, which is the head, even Christ. Christ is the head of the church from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. They're talking about joining everyone, every person, every soul, together to make it the increase of the body. We are the body of Christ. Once you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are part of the body. And, and our job is to increase the body, to grow it, to find more believers, to bring more people unto Jesus Christ, to the Father unto the edifying of itself in love. Do it in love. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. Whoops, out of focus again. Sorry, folks having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life, life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. See, the heart, when you say you love someone, you know, uh, the cool thing now is to make the little heart sign with your hands. But then... In our hearts is where God lives, is where Christ lives, is where our love abides in our heart. And here he's saying that these people, that, that, that they having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. So when your heart is blind, it's not full of love. And these people are living in darkness. They've alienated themselves from God, from the life of God through ignorance, because they don't know, they haven't been taught. No one's told them. We, they, haven't, they haven't been informed. That's our job. That's our job, is to plant seeds, to share the love 
that Christ has and God has for us as his children, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness, after you come to God through the Father, through the Son, through the salvation for the forgiveness of your sins and believing on him, that you become a new creature in God. Wherefore, putting away, lying, speak every man truth, with his neighbor, for we are members of one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. If you are mad with someone, don't go to bad mad. Neither, neither give place to the devil, because when you're angry, with, and 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 you have no reason to be angry with your brother or you are angry with him you need to go and 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 apologize so that peace will follow you and and by doing that you give no place to the devil because the devil lives in sin so therefore you want to keep yourself sin free I mean, you know, that's where, what the devil abides in. He abides in sin. That's what he wants to do. That's why he's not in heaven. Because he sinned against God. He was a cherub who guarded the, the covenant of the Ark of the Covenant. He was one of a cherub. The cherubs are like fighting angels. They are like mighty. They are mighty angels. Michael is an archangel, and Satan was too. But Satan wasn't satisfied to guard the seat. He wanted to sit on the seat. He wanted to be God. And there was a fight in heaven. There was war between the angels. Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels. And Michael and his angels threw Satan and his angels out of heaven. Two-thirds of the angels stood with Michael, and a third th stood with Satan, and they were cast out of heaven. That's why he's here, and a prince of the air. And he is looking to draw everyone that he can away from God and to encourage sin. And he knows our, all of our thoughts. Well, he doesn't know our thoughts. He, excuse me, he doesn't know our thoughts. But he knows the desires of the body, of the flesh. And he tempts us with those, whether it be sexual whether it be, you know, the feeling of being high with drugs or the satisfaction of cigarettes or, you know, eating too, too much food. You know, these are things that are of Satan. Anything that feeds the earthly flesh is of Satan. We want to feed our spiritual beings, which are of God from heaven. So, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good, to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So that, you know, when you're sharing God's word, this is, this is how you do it. 
and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. That's when Christ comes back. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one unto another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for the sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. It's not becoming of a saint to have these qualities or this kind of attitude or this action or these actions. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness. But now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruited works, of darkness, but rather reprove them, meaning tell them to get away. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest. Expose them. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest in light, wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, ye be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, now, wine, okay, yes, Jesus turned the water into wine, and it is quite acceptable to use wine in, in, in when you have communion with Christ and God, and you take of the wine, which represents his blood, and a piece of bread, unleavened bread, or a cracker, and you take that in remembrance of his body that was broken for you on the cross, it's acceptable to have a small amount of wine for to settle your stomach. It's good for that. But to take it in excess, 
to where you become unaware of your actions or do things that you wouldn't do if you were not having wine in excess is bad. So be careful when you're out there having a few drinks that you're not, you know, giving over to sin by drinking too much. People have wine with their dinner. That's okay. You're not getting drunk. That's what this message is. So be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Be faithful. This is what the, he's this is what this message is. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, not others. And is in likewise, be faithful unto your Lord. And don't go off worshiping rocks and stones and, and things made out of wood and carved out of gold or silver. Any kind of idol. Stay away from that. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be their own to their own husbands in everything. I have heard so many women say when they're asked about doing something, I don't know, let me ask, let me talk to my husband because they have respect for him. And he has respect for her. And together they are one body. As we are with Christ. And so this is an example of how to be faithful to Christ. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Oh, husband's... Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Christ is the word. The word was in the beginning and the word was with the word. And the word is God. God is the word. Jesus Christ is the word. So these words... This is Christ. These are his words. That he might present it to himself. A glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever hateth his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. Just as God loves, loves the church, just as Jesus is the church, and he loves us, which we are the church of Christ. He is the head of the church. And so it should be for a man and a woman to love one another and for the man to care for the woman and the woman to be subject to the man's, you know, wishes. Every woman wants to please her husband. And that's all this is saying. It's not saying men are greater than women. It's not saying that women should be out there, you know, fighting for their rights and all this it, it, this is not what it means. This, 
is Christ. This is God. And that is love. He's not talking about power. He's talking about love. Having love for one another. If you love yourself, then you'll love your wife. If the wife loves her husband, she'll listen to her husband. Because he is to be the care, her caretaker. You know, and care for her. And, and lead her. And guide her. And she's to trust him in doing that. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. See? Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife See that she reverence her husband. Respect him. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Now honor your father and mother. I know some of us have not had very good parents, but we do need to give thanks that they brought us to this world. They may not have been good um, examples of how to live godly lives. They might have been abusive. They might have been negligent to us, but we are still to honor them for the life uh, we have that they brought us into this world. Now, we should also honor our father and mother in caring for them in their old age. I think Christ would want us to do that. I think God would want us to do that, to honor our parents. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. But bring them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Not with eye service. Eye service. What is eye service? Men pleasers. What are they? I'm asking, what are they? Not with eye service. When someone gives you eye service, they look at you and then they do what they want. As men pleasers, doing what a man would want. But as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that, excuse me, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he bond, be bond or free. Now, during this time, the, there were slaves and masters. And God is saying, to have respect and love for them, whether they be free or bond. And whether a man be free or bond, that they should all receive Christ and do things in love. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Neither is there respect of persons with him. Now, what does that mean? That God is no respecter of persons. Now, so a person could be rich 
or poor or free or bond or they could be a janitor or a CEO of a company. To God, it doesn't matter what position you hold in this world. What matters to God is how you love one another and have respect for one another. But God, there is no respect of persons with him. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and and is the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Now, I know you guys keep hearing the full armor of God. The full armor of God. Well, here it is. Put on the full, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles, our wishes, our desires of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and not having done all, to stand. Doing everything in your power to stand against the wiles or desires or wishes of the devil. And how do we do that? Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Walk in peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And who are the wicked? Satan and his fallen angels. Also, the spirits, or the demons of the Nephilim, which are the children of the fallen angels. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching therefore with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things. When I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that be and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. It is God's greatest wish. You know, you say, God's wish. It's what he wants. It's the one thing in all the world that God does not own. And it is our love. And it is the thing he wants most. He also doesn't want not one soul to perish. So, 
if you're a brother or a sister in Christ, reach out to those who are lost. Those that do not know his love, show it to them by your actions, by your words, by the way that you conduct yourself. Be an example. Be the light on the hill that all may see and all may come unto the glory of God through Christ Jesus his Son who died on the cross so that we may have everlasting love and be one in the body of Christ. In Christ's name and I give thanks to my Heavenly Father for all of my blessings, because I have so many. He has watched over me and guarded me and guided me and corrected me and even loved me when I was lost in the wiles of the devil. And there is nothing in this world that you have done or I have done that God does not already know because he knows all. So it's a matter of humbling yourself, submitting yourself to Christ Jesus, asking for forgiveness of the sins that you know you committed and the ones you have no idea were even sins. And he will forgive all. And then be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And when you come up from that water in your baptism, you'll be a new creature because all your sin will have been washed away and walk in righteousness and read your Bible. And you may read it and not understand it because you have to pray for wisdom and understanding before you start reading your Bible. And it will be amazing to you as it was amazing to me how the words take on the meaning of what they really are and, and, and make sense. And so the more you read, the more you'll know, the more wisdom you'll have, the more you'll be able to walk in righteousness, the more you'll understand the full armor of God and understand his love for us is never ending his mercy and grace is un is un is it's limitless there's no bounds to his love or mercy or grace so if you haven't come to Christ i pray that you do i pray that you submit yourselves to our lord and king and be his faithful servant and walk in love and walk in the light and be kind to one another and be an example of love, the example of Christ. Be the, be the example of God, how much he loves each and every one of us is limitless, is boundless, and his mercy has no end. In, in Yeshua's name, I ask, Lord, that you bless us all, that you bring those that are lost into the light, that you put your workers to work seeking out those who are lost and walking in darkness and be an example to those that are lost and be a light unto those that are in darkness. And I ask this in Yeshua, your son's precious name. Amen.